everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of Innovation Conversations. My name is Persephone Quimby and I'm the Director of Business Development here at Architecting Innovation. Talking today to Matthew Kirchival, better known as Kirch. He is our Manager of Application Development and the self-proclaimed Grand Pooba of all <laughs> things unknown. Hello, Kirch. Hello. How are you? Wonderful. <laughs> So you've written two of what's going to be three uh, in a trilogy of mm -hmm. blogs for us. Uh, the first, uh, and the winner is, the right. second, getting started with Akka. So let's just dive right into this. For people that don't know out there, let's first talk about what is reactive and why should I or they care. Reactive is a modern paradigm to respond to the changing needs of um, applications. So how long have you had your iPhone? About five years. You remember like when you first got your iPhone, like no website worked, you were pinching and scrolling and all that, mm -hmm. right? So to combat that, they came up with the idea of responsive design. So we design sites by default now um, that fit your device, whether it be an iPad, iPhone, your tablet, your desktop. With Reactive, it's the same type of idea, but on the architecture side, not the, the user interface side. We design systems that can respond to different demands of modern systems, right? So now everybody can get to our website at any time, we need to be able to respond to that, those loads up and, up and down and being able to fail over quickly and gracefully. Okay. Uh, so tell us a little bit about Akka and, and tell us about Akka on the open source side and then yeah, Akka.net. So Akka itself, the idea behind it's not really new. It's not really a new technology. The idea goes way back to Erlang and cell phones from Ericsson. Um, the idea is that you have these very small modules that do things very, very simply. Um, they take a message in, process it, and send it off. They're very small, can fell over and come back up. So this idea came back up again to handle kind of modern problems and the guys on the JVM side created Akka. And our friends at Predit Bridge came up with the idea of porting over to .NET. It's a pretty faithful port, it's open source, it has a great really active, very active community, has, it's feature rich, it's, it's pretty impressed with what they were able to accomplish. So will Akka.net solve all of my bottleneck problems? <laughs> Not out of the box, you gotta, some, you gotta do some work with it. If you have bad architecture now, you can't just port bad architecture over and make it work everything. It's sort of like you have, a, have an application that's on site, but in the cloud, now you have a cloud problem. Mm -hmm. um, so it does allow you to break things into very small chunks and give you that a great uh, throughput and throughout the system if you do it correctly. Okay. So if someone's looking to get started, where's the best place for Akka.net? So our partners at FedEverage have spent a lot of time and effort in creating this boot camp. It takes about four to five hours to complete but it covers about 90% of what you need to know to get um, working inside of Akka.net. It's really well done, it's easy to get through, it's the best place to start. So what about that other 10%? You gotta work for it, you gotta, you gotta learn. You gotta have, put a little effort into <laughs> you gotta it? You put a little sweat equity into it. So is there a steep learning curve? Uh, no, it's not. Um, so overall, architecting a system that's reactive, there is a steep learning curve to the whole system. But with the way that actors work, it's really simple to get a junior or somebody not familiar with um, development pipelines working inside of Akka.net, even though they can't develop a whole system from scratch. Uh, can you talk a little bit about pricing? It's open source, so it's free. So that's, that's always a, a, a big benefit, benefit of a new technology. It's easier to sell to your, uh, your boss when it's free than then have to pay someone up front. How do you go about avoiding pitfalls uh, when you're developing with Akka.net apps? All of our principles still apply with solid development. Um, you want things that are small, that do simple responsibility, open, close, those things still respond to that thing. Uh, read it, when you get into Akka.net, read the documentation and know what you're doing and why you're using each piece. Uh, you may end up, in, in some instances, single message three or four times. And if you're doing that, you gotta be sure if you're going to a database, you're not doing four or five inserts. Just be aware that our principles still apply. It's, it's not magic. We can look forward to the third installment of your blog, your, your blog yeah. trilogy coming soon. Uh, finish it off and it'll be the last one in the, in the series. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time today, Kurt. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you all back here again soon. Thank you.